As World War II raged in Europe and the Pacific, the war years changed life on the prairies in ways we can now hardly imagine. Although no battles were fought in North America, every citizen participated in the war effort. The Historical and Cultural Society of Clay County tells the story of what life was like here on the home front. Washington in wartime is people, busy people who pass through these gates in a never-ending stream. Important people, little people, humble people, young and old, all determined to give their best in our nation's hour of peril. It's hard for us to understand the impact that the war had on everybody's life every single day. Here in Clay County, there were something like 3,000 people went into service, uh, 3,000 men and women out of a population of 25,000. That's a lot of people gone off to service. And everybody else that remained behind, they wanted desperately to do something at home. But no matter what the cost, the American people are prepared to pay the price of victory. Rationing probably was the thing on the home front that affected people the most. Sugar was the first thing that was rationed, and book number one had um, not very many coupons in it, and, and it was for coffee and sugar. Then after each subsequent um, ration book was issued, the canned vegetables and fruits were rationed, canned meats were rationed, rubber was rationed. They obviously needed gas and building materials, so all of those things were rationed. Most people pitched in and wanted to feel like they were doing something to help America win this world war. The rationing system really worked. Every crop needed to win the war will be produced in enormous quantities as a result of the planning and research centered here. During World War II, farming took a lot more muscle power and all that muscle was away during the war. In October of 1942, there was an early frost that was threatening to destroy the crops and we needed as many people out there as, as possible. So luckily, we're a college town. Moorhead State Teachers College, which is uh, Minnesota State University, Moorhead today, they declared an onion holiday. Classes were canceled and everyone was encouraged to go out and pick the fields, uh, sugar beets, onions, uh, to save it from being, uh, from being destroyed. Uh, 238 MSUM students uh, went out and worked in the fields for those days. Uh, that's half the student body. For the rest of the war, they were proud of, of that. The holders rallying to the call for more food joined the growing army of victory gardeners. We needed to bump up the food production, so the government said, please, pretty please, can you turn your yard into a garden? Victory gardening was a way to feed your own family so that the farmers can send the wheat and the commercial crop overseas. It was really successful. In 1943, one in three uh, vegetables grown in this country that year were grown in somebody's yard. I want to report about another great American army, enrolling one in every four Americans. Boys and girls collect scraps to build up our national stockpile. Scrap drives were, were one place where rural parts of the country like ours really shined. Uh, New York City, Los Angeles, they can't touch the amount of rusty old metal that can be produced out here in the country. One day in Holly, they let all the kids out of school and all the businesses closed down. And in one day, they collected uh, almost half a million pounds of scrap. But with our country in peril, the women of America rallied to the support of their men. These mothers, wives, and sweethearts came to stand shoulder to shoulder with them in almost every capacity. Here in Clay County, we didn't have Rosie the Riveter, we had Rosie the Egg Cracker. You know, we weren't making munitions or tanks over here, but we were feeding the world. Well, Fairmont Creamery is one of the industries in locally that greatly expanded during the war. They added in February 1942 an egg dehydrating plant dried eggs could be kept for years, really, without refrigeration and uh, could be reconstituted with a little bit of water and uh, scrambled. My dad was in the South Pacific during the Second World War and he despised them, he just hated them, but uh, they did keep and uh, uh, they were a successful product for, for Fairmont. Uh, they hired a hundred young women to crack eggs, essentially. Uh, each one of these gals on an eight-hour shift would crack 164 eggs an hour. That's half a million eggs every single day went through that plant. That would be the equivalent of just about every egg produced within 50 miles of Fargo-Moorhead during the war. 
But Washington in wartime is people, people intent on contributing their personal effort. The most common way for people in Clay County to participate in the war effort was by volunteering with the Red Cross. Um, regularly to just go to the Moorhead City Hall, they rolled bandages. And we're now talking about like plastic band-aids, we're talking about long white sheets. Another thing that the Red Cross did was prepared care packages for prisoners of war. So these care packages would usually be filled with food, sometimes you'll get a book or even art supplies. And we have a uh, letter home, uh, written home by a, a paratrooper who was from Holly. He writes home to his wife, I want you to give $10 to the American Red Cross. If, if they ask why, tell them I'm in Germany and, and I know how much they're doing for us over here. 28 nations stand united until victory is won. Let us march toward the clean world our hands can make. I think what's fascinating about history is putting yourself in the shoes of the people that are living there. What would you be doing? Could I handle coffee rationing? If rationed coffee works out to about six cups a week, I had that this morning. In this exhibit, when you get the school groups in here, uh, one of the first things I ask them is, are we at war today? And almost all of them will say no, uh, unless you have a family member, someone you love in Afghanistan or Iraq. The war just doesn't touch you. And what this exhibit is really about how if you lived here, your family was incredibly affected by, by World War II. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts. And by the members of Prairie Public.